Das ist der persönliche Buddha von Brian Molko, Sänger und Frontmann der Band Placebo. And you started your band 15, 16 years ago. At least you had one of your first uh, concerts under the name Placebo during mm. that time. Um, when you when you were thinking about playing, would you ever thought that you would play and headlining a festival in Germany? No, uh, absolutely not. I mean, at the time, it was it was the mid '90s, and our our main motivation was just trying not to get a real job and we would we said to ourselves well if somehow we can put food on the table and like put a roof over our heads through this music thing then that's fine that's absolutely fine but it, you know it didn't quite work out that way you know so we had quite a bit of success on our first album so you know but we were prepared to just kind of you know try and sort of opt out of what society wants from you expects from you you know and that was sort of What, what we wanted to do because the idea of getting a job was just far too depressing for us you know so, did you really ever had rough times with the band placebo that you really were thinking about what should i eat tomorrow morning or what can i afford to eat oh absolutely you know but this was kind of before the band and everything you know certainly yeah we had some money problems i was homeless you know and things like that so i slept a lot on floors and things and it's uh, you know And stations and shit, you know. So it's uh, it's it's interesting, you know. Now it's it's the total flip side from that, you know. Exactly. That's why I just want to ask. Now you're really superstars. You travel all over the world. You're not. Yes, I don't. You are. I don't know. I'm just a musician, really. You know. But I mean, you're the headliner, or Placebo is the headliner of the Area 4 Festival, and um, there are twenty three thousand twenty three thousand people outside waiting for you to play in a minute. What does that mean to you? It's a respectable amount of people, you know? Uh, well, you know, you just really hope that you're not going to make a total twat of yourself in front of 23,000 people, a complete fool of yourself, you know? You just really hope that uh, everything is going to slot into place and that it's, it's going to be okay. I'm particularly concerned tonight because we have to go on stage after the Queens of the Stone Age and I really don't like doing that. You know, so uh, are you afraid of well, Josh? Uh, well, no, no, they're good friends of ours, but they're just such a good band that you know I don't like going on stage after them. But thankfully, the Queens of the Stone Age are very jet lagged. So uh, heard, uh, Josh was sleeping the whole afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we might, wake up. so we might be okay. You know, okay. yeah. So, um, but coming back, or thinking about back in, uh, in the past, um, David Bowie was one of your big supporters. What really? Well, what did it mean to you that he really explored you and your music? <laughs> well, that could be interpreted in a very, very strange way. Um, but, uh, no, David was fantastic and sort of really instrumental for us at the beginning of our career because he gave us so many opportunities to sort of to grow up and to learn the mechanics of being in a band. And, uh, you know, he had great, great wisdom to impart. So... Uh, It was a fantastic kind of apprenticeship, you know, sort of being taken under the wing of David Bowie and being taken around the world by him and sort of, you know, because we, we were kind of his favorite opening band for a while. And so we learned a great deal. Do you still have contact with him? Yes, occasionally, yeah. So did he like your recent album? Oh, yes. <laughs> of course, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> So, and what can we expect of your tonight's show? You have to play after the Queens of the Stone Age. Will you rock even more? I, you know, we're going to go on stage and be ourselves, you know, and uh, it'll be different. Um, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to try and out-rock them. Uh, we're just going to go in there and, and uh, we're trying to lift people's spirits tonight, you know. Hopefully they'll, they'll be happy by the time it's finished.